Today, I'm going to redo this question right here because when I was doing this for the first time, I made a horrible mistake. The formula for that is just radius times theta. So I'm going to redo it. And for the people who don't know, this is the notorious GCSE map question from the year of 2022. It's the last question of the GCSE map paper. Worth five marks. And let me tell you, this one even made the news. A lot of people didn't like it. Okay, so this is how I'm going to do it. First, I'm going to make a vertical cut and then a horizontal cut. And I would like to find the area of this region first. And let me call the R1. Once we have the area of R1, we can just multiply it by 4 and then we will be done. And as we can see, for R1, we will first have this quarter circle. And then we will just have to minus this part right here. So let me write this down right here. R1 equals the area of the quarter circle. And remember, the radius is 4. So this right here must be 4. And the quarter circle is just going to be a quarter times pi. And the radius is 4. And we square that. So that's the first part. Now, I'm going to just take a look from here to here. And I would like to subtract this area. And this is a sector. And this is where I made the mistake in the previous video. The area of the sector is 1 half r squared times theta. And theta has to be in radians. Yes, this is the correct formula. And I cannot believe I used the wrong formula in the previous video. But anyway, though, what is the angle theta here, though? Well, as we can see, this right here is 4. And then we also know that this right here, from point B to the circle here, it must be the radius, and the radius is 4, so this right here is also 4. Finally though, if we connect from here to here, that's also a radius if you look at the third circle here. So that has to be 4 as well. So that blue triangle is equilateral, meaning this angle must be 60 degrees. So 60 degrees times pi over 180 degrees, we have pi over 3. So we are going to subtract the area of that sector. This right here is pi over 3, and the radius is 4. So we subtract 1 half times the radius squared times the angle theta. Now, we just have one more part that we will have to subtract. So let me just clean this up a little bit. Remember earlier, we have taken care of the sector here already. The final part is this wedge thing. It looks like a potato wedge, in my opinion. So we have this part. And to get the area of this part, this, it's actually this sector. Right? It's just like if you look at it like this, okay, and then minus that equilateral triangle. So let's just focus on this right here, minus the area of the equilateral triangle. Alright, so this right here, it's pretty much the same area like what we did earlier. That's pi over 3 and the radius is 4, so 1 half radius is 4 and we square that times the angle in radians so that's all we need now for the equilateral triangle each side is equal to 4 and how do we find the area of an equilateral triangle the area of this is that we can just make a vertical cut and then you can see that from here to here will be 2 so this side must be what 2 times square root of 3 because we have a 30, 60, 90 special right triangle. And the longer side is square root of 3 times the shorter side. Now, the area of this equilateral triangle will just be 1 half, and we look at 4 as the base, times this as the height. Just like this. And now let's just go ahead and work this out 
and then we will go by there and then subtract. So 4 squared is 16, divided by 2 is 8, and then multiply by this, so altogether 8 pi over 3. And then minus, this right here is just 2, and then times 2 again, so it's 4, so minus 4 square root of 3. So that red part is that. So we will have to minus that wedge thing, which is minus 8 pi over 3 minus 4 square root of 3. All right, I better get this right this time. So the rest is just clean up work. And also, of course, multiply by 4 at the end. So this right here, 4 squared is 16 divided by 4 is 4. So we have 4 pi. And then minus, this is 8, and then times pi over 3, so 8 pi over 3. And then distribute the negative, so we have negative pi, 8 pi over 3, and then plus 4 square root of 3. Yeah, the numbers are definitely not nice. And then we can combine this and that together. That's the most we can do, right? Well, technically, I can also combine the part with pi. So I'm going to multiply this by 3 and 3. So we have 12 pi minus 8 pi and then minus 8 pi. So that will be minus, wow, minus 4 pi over 3 and then plus 4 square root of 3. I am pretty sure 4 square root of 3 is bigger than this. So the result is still positive. All right. So finally, I'm just going to write this down right here. The answer is just going to be 4 times R1, which is 4 times whatever that we got earlier. I will put down 4 square root of 3 first, and then minus 4 pi over 3. And then right here, I will just write down 16 square root of 3 minus 16 pi over 3. All right, that has to be the final answer. Hey, do you like geometry equations or algebraic equations? Or maybe calculus concepts or computer science problems? Well, if you are interested in learning all that, then I would like to tell you about our sponsor today, Brilliant.Work. Brilliant is an online learning platform that helps you to excel in math and science. Their goal is to provide the most effective way for you to learn. I really like Brilliant not only because they got thousands of interactive lessons ranging from basic algebra to advanced math, but also each lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving that lets you test out the concepts along the way. As a math teacher for over 10 years, I always advise my students that you need to be constantly learning and practicing in order to reach your goal. Now you can try Brilliant for free for 30 days. Use the link in the description, brilliant.org/blackandredpen, so that you can also get 20% off discount for the annual premium subscription. And I want to thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video, and I also want to thank you guys for checking them out.